Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Today's video is all about elephant ear care in pots and in ground. There are three different types of true elephant ears. While there are a lot of plants that grow foliage very similar, they may not be elephant ears. Elephant ears are either colocasia, alocasia, or xanthosoma. This here is a colocasia, and then I will show you some alocasias, and then I will show you a xanthosoma that I keep in my house. I hope this video is informative. Leave me some questions or comments if I did not answer all of the questions that you may have. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm holding my mic like this because I don't have a good place to clip it. So that's why it looks like this. Um, anyways, so my first tip would be when you're planting in pots to use a good soil mix. Now, this can be whatever you can afford in your price range. Buy the best in that price range. They appreciate a decent soil mix. Tip number two, when you are planting them in that soil mix, make sure that you add in compost and then also add in a granular fertilizer. For several of my pots, I planted them in and I used worm casings and then just a basic granular all-purpose fertilizer. Any liquid fertilizer is going to be a quick feed for the plant. Granular fertilizer or a compost is going to be a slow feed for the plant. Quick feeds means that the plant can utilize the nutrients in that fertilizer much faster than a granular or um, any other sort of compost because those things have to break down over time, which is why you want to do a um, two piece combo, I guess. So you want to have a slow feed and a quick feed. If you're planting your elephant ears in ground, you wanna dig a hole that is twice as wide and deep as the plant, and then you wanna add a compost or a granular fertilizer in at the bottom of that hole, and then plant your plant in that hole. If you choose to fertilize um, a liquid feed throughout the season, you are definitely welcome to do that. That will also help your plant grow big. I don't do that for my in-ground plants just because it's just one extra thing to do. They do just fine in the ground with you know the nutrients that they can pull from the soil and the uh, slow feed that I put in the hole. So it's kind of up to you what you um, have the time for. Anything that is potted will be very happy to get a liquid fertilizer weekly. So I garden in Ohio zone 5B and I plant my elephant ears in part sun, meaning that they get morning sun and then they get afternoon shade. If you live in an area of the world or country where you have a very, very hot sun, hot summer, hot sun and summer, you will wanna make sure that your plants are either in part shade or full shade. So I'm talking like, you know, Texas heat, Florida heat, you want to make sure that your plants are getting a lot of shade or else they may burn. So one of the common issues that I have with my elephant ears are spider mites. Um, spider mites are just nasty little creatures that look like tiny little spiders and they will quickly take over if you are not proactive with your treatment. So every week I spray my elephant ears down with Captain Jack's dead bug. Um, and this year we are having a big spider mite issue in the garden. Uh, spider mites do spread to other plants. So I have a lot of plants in the garden that are suffering from spider mites. I am continuing to spray and stay on top of it. So if you happen to see a spider mite issue on your elephant ears, make sure that you are taking control of that situation because it can spread to everything else in your garden um, along with spraying your plants with um, like a neem based insecticide you can also just hose the leaves off every week spider mites do not enjoy moist or humid conditions so that is one way to keep their numbers low so one of the questions i get asked most often is why are my elephant ear leaves turning yellow this is a loaded question because it can be just about anything. It can be fertilizer, it can be too much water, it can be too little water, it could be too much sun, it could be not enough sun, it could be a pest issue, it could be an over fertilization issue. 
just so many things. So one of the things that I always ask people is how do you take care of it? And then you kind of get a list and you kind of go through that list. Am I, you know, am I over watering it? Am I, is it in too much sun? Did I over fertilize it? Um, is there a pest issue? Is this an older leaf? Because older leaves do die off. It's normal for those to turn yellow and fade. So another question that I got is when do you break these plants down for winter? What do you do when winter time comes? What I do is I dig them up, I cut off all of the roots and the foliage and I allow the bulbs to dry out and once they are dry or mostly dry I put them in paper bags like you would like a paper you know lunch bag or like a grocery paper bag I store them in there and then I put them in a space that stays cool kind of like a basement or in a closet and stays cool and dry so you want it to be in a space that is not getting a ton of humidity and a space that is not you know moist so once February comes, that's when I start to wake my elephant ears back up from their winter slumber. And then we start that process all over again. So my suggestion is if you want to keep reusing your bulbs every year and you live in a cooler climate, a climate that experiences frost and hard frost, you will want to leave those elephant ears in the ground or in pots until that first frost or close to it just to give them as long of season as possible to store energy in the bulb. Once you have that first frost or you get close to it, go ahead and cut that plant back. If you want to store your plant in the pot, you definitely can do that. Make sure that that soil dries out all the way before you cut off the foliage and store that pot. So you guys already know how amazing elephant ears are and having them in the garden, once you get your first one, you will always grow them in your garden year after year. So thank you guys so much for watching. If there were questions that I did not answer, feel free to leave them below. I am so happy to help you guys with this. Many of you have reached out on Instagram or in the comments section and I really appreciate that. I am happy to help you. So if you have a question, ask it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.